Are you working your nine to five and not making the money you desire? Is your work commute so long you never have time for yourself and family at the end of day? Do you worry that the money you make won't cover your rising bills? If you answered yes, you are in the right place at the right time. The highest paid dot online is having a March Madness sale on its VIP program. With this sale, you will receive 20% off the regular purchase price. Use code MARCH20 to access the sale. Here is what the VIP program brings, over 45 classes of content. Twice a month, live broadcast to discuss your trades and the market. Four hours of one-on-one -on -one consult, 12-month window. Three hours of mindset counseling, six-month window. Discord group, access to people that are serious and focused on improving their economic situation. This course plus community should be priced around $25,000 a year. However, you can access all this for a fraction of that price. We have partnered with Affirm and Afterpay to offer you more buying options. Don't miss out on this sale. You will regret missing out in 2024 as the nation's economic situation gets tighter and businesses start looking to cut people as a way to save money. This is the last month the four hours of one-on-one -on -one will be offered with this course purchase. Use code MARCH20 to access the sale. Go to thehighestpaid.online, select the VIP program, and get in today. Have you ever thought about what you're going to have to do and what you're going to need to do if you decide to build out your own platform and build out your own vertical, especially if you're doing something that's going to be media based? That's what we're going to talk about in this particular video. It's titled It's Different When You Have to Build It. Let's go ahead and get right into it. The number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, Google. Now, who's going to be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you want to marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, fact, Tway? You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, forward. man. You ain't yeah. got the answers. Kanye. I, you, you ain't did, got you, the if, answers. If you, if, you, you ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Doing what? You more ain't than got. Me? Come on, chill out. You bro. ain't got the answers. Kanye, relax. You ain't got the answers. Bro, I'm asking you you a question. You ain't been doing the education. Bro. You ain't been doing the education. Kanye. Calm down. You don't have the answers though, Calm down. because you're trying to give me advice about no, something. No, 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 you ain't, no, no. you Listen. ain't got the answers. You ain't spent thirteen million dollars of your I own money trying to empower right. yourself. Yes, but I spent hundreds of thousands and doing putting out clothing lines at a smaller degree. All I'm asking you, I'm, and then, but, and but, it but, ain't but, no Ralph though. Uh, it, it ain't, ain't Ralph but, but, level. But let me ask you this: I'm asking What's you, the name of your clothing line? We don't know. Kanye, you know what I'm saying? Because I lost money, but that's not exactly. That and I could lose money on a higher level too. And that's don't what think I'm just asking because wait, wait, don't think up, because Kanye, I got the most or the let least me, money. Let me finish my question, dog. Man, because, no, but, but man. Let me hear the question. You don't man. have the answers. I'm asking you for the answer. It's a question. He recently turned to the tool of Twitter to post the termination of his Yeezy brand collaboration with Gap as he remains in an ongoing legal battle with Adidas. How do you move forward now in the fashion industry when they're saying you can't even not only show Yeezy products, but anything bearing that likeness? Oh, we got some new lawyers. We really had to level up and show them, really show them who's, you know, who's the new boss in town. He now plans to sell the Yeezy brand directly to consumers, something he argued about with radio host Sway back in 2013. Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, like Sway? You take a few steps back to go You ain't got the answers, forward. man. So Sway, almost 10 years ago, said, man, why don't you do it on your own? Was he right? You know what? I will go ahead and say Sway had the answer. I know people are going to be like, no. And that's that, I wouldn't say infamous, but famous interview that Kanye West had with Sway. We know now over 10 years ago. And Sway asked him, why won't you do some of the things on your own as opposed to putting yourself in a position where you're going to be dependent upon these large corporations and then you fight with them just to try to get things done. But Kanye, in that kind of rant, expressed to Sway where he was at. He didn't know how to do it. And we're going to kind of talk about that. Even though Kanye had a lot of really good ideas, he had a really, really good audience. Um, he had the desire to do it. 
he didn't necessarily have the information. We talk about the education capital, the information capital around how to do it the way he thought he wanted to do it. And so as a result, he partnered with these other people and then he fell out with them. So now he's back to trying to do things on his own. And often when we are sitting back and we're receiving a lot of information about this person has this situation going on, this person has this situation going on, we often are not aware that many of them have deals to where they are often the face or the promoter of something, or maybe they're the talent on the platform, but really behind the scenes where the real business is taking place, they often don't have an understanding of how to do that. And so what we get caught up in is we get caught up in the promotion or the celebrity around the situation. However, we don't really often understand what it can really take to do these things on our own. And we often don't understand why so many people don't go down these particular roads. And so I got a video on this YouTube about the different types of capital. And it can be because people lack in those capital areas and they often don't know how to build those things up. So really quickly, many people become successful because they tap into business and apologize for the typo that is already successful. And then they benefit from that success. Right. So looking at the three people at the bottom of the screen, what they were able to do is tap into somebody else's business that was already had something going. And then they were able to benefit from that. And so what it does, is it allows them to piggyback off the success of that business. So if you know Tucker Carlson, he was on CNN, he was on MSNBC, then he started his own website, then he used that to go to Fox News, then he got fired or let go from Fox News, however that situation went, and then now he's trying to do his own thing again. But he became well-known on other people's platforms. He did not become well-known by building out his own vertical from scratch. He used those platforms to get his name up, to understand what the audience really wanted, and then try to serve the audience that, then he left to go back to Fox. And then now he's going to try to do the same thing over and over again. Okay, so benefits of this particular type of arrangement where you piggyback on what somebody else has done. The first thing is you're going to get access. If you're working in media or you're working in an environment and somebody else has already built out everything, well, you get access to everything that they've built or you should under normal circumstances. As a result, you don't have to build it out. So, for example, Adidas had the ability to distribute products anywhere in the world that they have access to. Right. So they're really, really big in Europe. They're bigger in Europe than they are inside the United States. Kanye, by being part of the Adidas family or being under that umbrella, now gets that access. Right. It would take him years to build those type of retail relationships. He doesn't have to do that. Once he gets with Adidas, he automatically has access to that. You have access to expertise that's inside that corporation that you yourself don't have. Right. So if Miss Owens goes to the Daily Wire, they already understand how to do certain things in media. Therefore, she doesn't have to figure out how to do that on her own. She gets access to that. Right. Tucker Carlson at Fox, Fox Media had already had a longstanding brand. So they are able to bring Tucker in and give him access to everybody they have in there to put him in the best position to be successful. Next thing you're going to get, you're going to get credibility. If you're attaching yourself to a brand that's already credible, you get credibility from that brand. You may think Kanye West is the biggest thing in the world. He's not bigger than Adidas. Adidas has been selling shoes for like 50 years. Right? So you get a credibility because of the partnership that you normally would not have without the partnership. And then you can use that credibility to make yourself look bigger in front of your audience. And so this is why if somebody often partners with somebody else, the audience will think more of that than somebody that may have a smaller situation, but they did it on their own because they're looking at what they believe is the credibility of the larger situation. Infrastructure. We talked about this before. When you are going with a larger organization that's already been well built and well established, they already have infrastructure built out. You get to get tapped into all of that. And then therefore, you don't have to necessarily have to go build out on your own, especially if you don't know how to build it. Because often when you're starting something out, especially business wise, you may not know what you don't know. 
And then therefore other people have an advantage over you because they already have these infrastructures and these verticals built. They know how to leverage them and you don't, you don't even know you need to build them. And then you don't have the people in place to help you maintain them. This is why people often get with larger organizations to try to propel their career. Okay. Further investment into the business to help you grow. What I mean by that is that if company A already has their thing going and they bring you in, they will continue to invest in company A because they're trying to grow the business, which in turn grows you. That's not money that you're expected to invest in. You're just contracted or you just work there or you have a partnership, but you're not expected to try to come up with capital uh, investment or capital budgeting or what we call CapEx to help grow the situation. You're able to just benefit from it because you're there. Right. And so that's something that a lot of people don't understand. If it's your situation, you got to go find the capital to invest. If it's somebody else's situation, that's their job to go do that. Your job is just to be talent. Or in Kanye's case, just to design shoes and design clothes. Your job is not to worry about the economic piece of the situation, right? Next thing, you can grow as a business grows. So we talked about before. Normally, as the business gets bigger, you'll get bigger because you're part of that business, right? So as the cred credibility and the visibility of the situation grows, you normally can get bigger. So Kanye benefited a lot from being with Fox. I'm sorry, with being with Adidas. Tucker benefited from being on Fox. And Candace benefited a lot from being on, what is it, The Daily? I forgot what the end of that particular title is. They benefited because those businesses continued to grow. So then therefore they grew and they were able to raise their profile. So really quickly, let's go into the deal that Tucker had and what he's currently working on now with the situation with X, right? So here's an article. Tucker got ousted from Fox because of the Dominion voting systems. We looked at a lot of Tucker's emails when he was at Fox and it really showed that he's just an entertainer. And I knew that because when he was on CNN and he was on MSNBC, which especially MSNBC is seen as a liberal network, his positioning was that he was more of a liberal. Then once he went to Fox, he became more of a kind of like a, a far right conservative, but it's just entertainment. You know, he's there to make a dollar performing for that particular audience, right? So Carson and his college, one of his people that he went to school with named Patel, this Indian dude, they found a backer in Omid Malik, who's the founder of Farva Hard Partners in 1789 Capital, which aims to capitalize on opportunities that they see is left open by the wokeness of more traditional sources of capital. Now, this is something that's going to be very interesting because people that really understand the finance space, it's only been maybe the last five or six years where finance in media has been characterized as being liberal. Historically, finance, especially in the United States of America, has always been presented as a very conservative space. So it's kind of weird now that these people are trying to craft this narrative, and I know why they're doing it, that currently capital and finance is liberal. That's kind of weird, but this is kind of how they're trying to position themselves as an investment route compared to other investment routes, right? So 1789 Capital made its initial investment into what Tucker and Patel were doing. So that was a $15 million seed round into that particular business that they're trying to build. So Tucker, or Tucker Carlson and Patel are trying to build out this new media vertical, right? So currently right now they're using X, but their job is to move into something different. So the company has been registered in Nevada under the holding name Last Country Incorporated. And so Malik is familiar with Carlson and Patel having early invested into the Daily Caller. Now, the Daily Caller is a website that they put up, I want to say maybe 2010, they built that up. That was when he was in between his last job in Fox News. And it's more like traditional media with a lot of text, right? So the goal of 1789 is to get Carson and Patel's company to the point of showing proof of concept for its online video business model so the pair can continue to raise hundreds of millions of dollars they are eventually targeting, the journal said. The venture would be driven by subscriptions, but would offer off and stream of free online videos of Carson and other talent. Malik thinks some right-leaning business ventures have failed to sustain mass appeal because they don't have sophisticated financial backers. What has happened up to now is you have some rich benefactor who is ideological, put a company in business, 
but then there's no institutional support to continue to finance that business. This is something we talked about. Many of the right-wing media publications that you've seen are based on the founders reaching out to some far-right billionaire or multimillionaire and them financing all the operations. So you see this with Charlie Kirk. He was mentored by a billionaire, and then he has a lot of far-right business people that finance Turning Point USA, right? Um, Moms for Liberty, same type of setup. So what they do is they find these people that have an ideolog ideological slant. There's nothing wrong with that. If you look at some of the founders of APAC, it's the same scenario. And they finance that. Now, here's the thing. That's not investment from institutional bankers, right? And so that's what I'm trying to say is that the institutional side of capital is not liberal, from my experience. They're not. They're very much bottom line driven. So their ideology is making money. And that's not commentary. That's not my perspective. That's not my take. I'm saying this from my experience, listening to hundreds of earning calls, reading hundreds, if not thousands of balance sheets, and actually speaking to people in the space. Their goal is bottom line. That's what they're looking at at the end of the day. Right. If you look at a lot of these far right media publications, if you look at Prager, you look at, I think it's a Daily Wire, they've got a lot of investment from far right business people that made a lot of money and they buy into this idea that we're going to combat left wing media with our platform. But that doesn't mean that you can get institution from funds when you're looking for funds and you're looking for hedge funds and you're looking for institutional money. They're going to be a lot more bottom line or growth driven. So either you're going to grow or you already can show some level of bottom line. And the numbers got to be there. If they're not there, they're really not going to deal with you because there's so many other opportunities for them to get a return on their money. Okay? So that's Tucker's deal. Now, when you don't go in those particular directions, there's a different scenario. So let's go here to the downside of the arrangement. Right? So when you're in these particular type of arrangement, there's an upside, there's also a downside. So what's the downside? You don't have any autonomy. And we kind of saw this with Candace Owens. She's there to say what they want her to say. Right? So two Jewish guys build out a media platform. Okay? You're there to say what they want you to say. You're not there to say what you want to say. It doesn't work that way because why? We built this platform. You didn't build it. Therefore, even though you're contracted to perform for us, you're an entertainer on our platform, it doesn't mean you get to say what you want to say. It means you get to say what we want you to say. That's your job. Your job is not to do what you want to do. There is no such thing in the world where you get a job or you get contracted to do a job and the job is you get to do what you want to do, unless you're sleeping with the boss or something like that. Right? That's the only way that might work. Right? So the idea that you get to do what you want to do inside somebody else's business is the height of delusion. It doesn't work that way. It works like that on the internet, but in the real world, we, as we saw, it doesn't work that way. Nobody builds a business and pays somebody a sizable amount of money, which is going to be relative for them to do what they want to do unless they're having sex with the boss. That's the only way you can get away with that, right? So you don't have the autonomy. You can't do what you want to do on, on somebody else's platform, Right? You don't have decision-making authority, which means that there's going to be decisions made in the business that you may not agree with. And it doesn't matter because you don't have decision-making authority because it's not your business. You have to give all of that up to be in those type of relationships. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that's what you're giving up. Therefore, things may take place in the business that you don't agree with, but it's not your business because it's not your business. It's somebody else's business that you work for. You can't go against the grain of the business. Again, if somebody creates a business that's based around creating certain certain type of messaging in the business, you can't go against the grain of the business. Right. So your job is to go in there and do what those people want you to do. So Kanye wanted when he was with Gap, he wanted to do twenty dollar clothes. Gap said, no, we're not going to do twenty dollar clothes. Because Gap doesn't do twenty dollar clothes. That's not what they do. You can't go against it. You understand me? That's why when Tucker Carlson was on MSNBC and he was on CNN, he knew he couldn't do his he couldn't do certain stuff on that platform because of what the platform was based on. So he figured out what role of the entertainer can I play 
to build an audience here that is acceptable to this particular platform. And then hopefully the people that watch it buy into it. So his job on MSNBC was a kind of more comes kind of down the middle. Then when he goes to Fox, he can go far right. Because if he goes far right on MSNBC, he's going against the grain of the business. You can't do that. Expect to stay there. When you leave, you don't get to take the business assets with you. So this is something that's really, really important. Right. And this is something that Erica talked about. And she gave really, really, especially like last year. Because she's had a lot of these offers because of who she is on social media. And one thing about when you associate with a lot of these businesses, but especially in this kind of like online media space, and you're trying to be a quote unquote commentator. You don't get to take those business assets with you. So what I mean is that. The Daily Wire has offline assets that you may have helped build because of who you are on the platform. When you leave, you don't get to take those. Right. The Daily Wire may have a website or Fox News may have a website that you're helping drive traffic to. Well, that's their website, not yours. So any business assets belong to the business that you were contracted to work for. Same way when a person leaves the NFL, you don't get to take NFL assets with you because you were contracted on this team to work for the NFL. You leave with pretty much what you came in the door with. Often what you see in media is these people often don't even own their the name they were using in media. So if you work for somebody and the show is X, Y, Z, that person often don't even own the name of the show. So when they go somewhere else, they got to come up with a different name because that name has been trademarked by that particular organization for use in media. Therefore, again, you're building up this person's business based on the relationship you have, but you don't get any business assets to take with you. So this is why when the thing is a daily wire, they offered. Uh, that Anglo guy Crowder and he didn't like the deal Well, he didn't have to take the deal because he has business assets outside of just YouTube that are really enabling him to make his money. It's not just he got a YouTube channel. He actually has business assets outside of YouTube that allows him to continue to make money. That's not just based on I got to make another video. He got an email list. He sells products. He does things of that nature. So he has business assets. A lot of YouTubers don't understand the concept of business assets. They're just trying to get paid off YouTube. And that's cool if you can pull it off. Right. But other business people have actual business assets that don't exist on social media. That's really bringing in the real money for them, whether it be product lines, it be an email list that they're offer, They're able to offer products to. Those are the real business assets, not the videos on YouTube, right? You don't have any equity in the business you help build in most situations. This is going to go over the head of a lot of people because they haven't been exposed to this part of the deal, right? I was on a YouTube video, maybe it's six months ago now, and they're talking about the Tyler Perry situation. And a guy was saying, well, Tyler Perry should move to another platform. And I explained why would Tyler Perry move to another platform off of BET on the digital side when he has like a quarter stake of equity in BET on the digital side. Now, I know that because I read more than most people, so I'm just not going off headlines. Because if he has a quarter stake of BET on the digital side of BET digital, he has got a quarter stake in that. And then he moves everything to another platform. What is his quarter stake worth now in BET? Right. What is it worth if you were willing to leave the platform? What? So what are you saying that your stake is worth inside the platform? In my opinion, the most prudent thing is what he tried to do, which is buy the whole platform. Because he already has a quarter stake. And then he's bringing assets to the platform. Now, why does Tyler Perry get a deal that C. Owens doesn't have? And now we're going to go into like a, a little bit more of a robust business conversation. Tyler Perry can go to BET Digital. And say, I will provide content to your platform because you got a struggling platform. Under these licensing terms. And I also want equity in the platform. Now, why can he demand that? And C. Owens can't demand that when she came from Prager and went to the Daily Wire. How come she couldn't demand equity? I'm going to give you an example. Tyler Perry in media. Well, let's talk about the movies and the television. 
we can attach a dollar amount to how much money he's made in business. When you're dealing with real people that are heavyweights in entertainment, we can look at this person and we can, using accounting, validate how much money they made in business. So we can look at Beyonce and we can say, Beyonce did a show last week and that show generated $30 million. Beyonce did a tour run of X amount of dates and those tour runs generated $500 million. The little Anglo girl, that's real young, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift did a tour run and the tour run generated X amount of dollars. When you're on somebody's show as a commentator or as a contributor, it's difficult to pull your validation out of the situation. It's not impossible, but it's difficult because what are you responsible for from a monetary standpoint on that platform? What are you responsible for, right? So if Tyler Perry is producing and directing a, a, a production and then he's putting it on a platform, he's responsible for the success of that production. If Beyonce has to do a show this weekend, she's responsible for the success of that show. If you're just a contributor on somebody else's platform and you're one of many contributors, what are you responsible for? So then how do we attach a value to you? So you don't have the same negotiating power as a Tyler Perry. So he can come in and say, hey, I contribute content under this licensing deal, but yet I want equity in the situation too. You got to give me a piece of the situation, right? Therefore, when you leave, you don't have any equity in there. So you pretty much leave with nothing. Again, we talked about that before because you're not able to benefit from the value that you're putting into the situation. So both Tucker and Candace and even Kanye put value in those situations that they were in but they're not able to pull that value out. Now, I don't know if Kanye owned Adidas stock. I don't know, right? But in most situations, you don't get the equity because it's difficult often to negotiate from that particular standpoint. Not in every situation, but you see why they don't ask for equity. Because if all you're doing is contributing to what you're doing, how do you demand equity from that particular standpoint, right? Next thing, you're not there to learn how to do things on your own. So we see with Tucker... He had a little bit of experience building out his own platform, but now he's going to a different format with going to be primarily video based. Because when they built out the Daily Caller in 2010, the Internet was still kind of very blog based. It was based on people reading, not in it's based on people watching videos all day. Does he understand how to build out that type of platform? Who did he learn it from? I told you all before, C. Owens is going to sit on the Daily Wire and they're never going to teach her how to run a business. Why? That's not their job to teach her how to run a business. Right? Their job is to put her in position to be successful as a commentator. So when you leave the platform, do you now know how to run a business? Just like Kanye West was asking Sway, how do I do it? He don't know. Because when you're in these environments, their job is not to teach you how to do it. Their job is to put you in a position to be successful at performing in the environment. It's not to teach you how to do it. Therefore, you got to not try to figure out what you don't know. First is how to put a team together that knows how to do it. Then how do I align the incentives to where they do it the way I need them to do it so I can be successful? Because what a lot of us are not familiar with is when you're looking at somebody that's really successful in media, it's because they got a team of people around them that are benefiting from their success. Right. When you're looking at people that are mainstream big, they got a team of people around them. When they leave those environments, they leave their team. Because they can't support them anymore because they're no longer on that platform. So then who do they align themselves with that can bring in the expertise on how to be successful in these environments? So if you got to now build out your own platform from scratch. Who do you know can help you do that? That actually has a know how. And then what do you have to give them? So they're comfortable building it out. Do you have to give them equity? Or can you just hand them a paycheck? Right? So you're not on these platforms to learn how to do stuff on your own. Just like many of you are working a job, the job is not teaching you how to do that on your own. They just want you to come to work and do the job and take your ass back home. Because it's not their job to teach you how to do it. So then when you go out on your own, you got to learn how to do this stuff on your own. It can take a long time to learn how to do it. And you can burn through a lot of money like Kanye West trying to figure out how to do it and then realizing you need to scale everything down and now you can have success. He was trying to do it on a scale that he couldn't support. 
when you start over, we talked about you got to build everything from scratch. How do you do this when you don't know how? So if you're C. Owens and you now got to build everything from scratch, how do you do this when you don't know how to do it? And you don't have the expertise in your family because I don't believe that her husband knows how to do this stuff because he hasn't been successful in his endeavors in the media space, looking at Paul Lohr and things of that nature. Those was crashes, right? They really made a lot of their money in the commodities game. If people that actually do the research, they didn't make their money in media. And I'm talking about the father of, of her husband. They made their money in commodities. They didn't make their money in media. So how do you build out a media platform from scratch when you don't know how to do it? I'm not talking about like a YouTube channel that draws a lot of revenue. I'm talking about building out real tangible business assets, right? That you can eat off of outside of just throwing a lot of videos up on social media, right? How do you learn how to do that when you don't know how to do it? So then who do you need to attach yourself to to know how to do it? Because the people around her don't know how to do it because if they did, she would have never been on those other platforms. You can't fool me with that. Right. She wouldn't be promoting the Freedom Phone and promoting all this other weird stuff if they actually knew how to do this type of stuff, because none of that stuff worked because it was never going to work because they were like just money grabs from the right wing audience. You feel me? Um, a guy that's really mastered building out tangible assets off the of media is Alex Jones. Right. If I would see Owens, I would put together a few million dollars and I would reach out to Alex Jones and say, let me spend a week with you. And you teach me how you build these tangible assets that are outside of social media to where you can eat off these. Even if your social media presence is not as big as it was. Because he's been doing this for 30 years. He's been doing this before social got big because he built everything up organically. So once social blew up, he was able to walk into it. But he already had the foundation built. Right. He's one of the best examples of that in the world. But if you don't know how to do it, you may not even know to ask him that question. Right. So, again, how does Tucker see always build a media empire based around them? See, because the Daily Caller wasn't based around Tucker. What Tucker's show on X is is based around Tucker. Right. Candace Owens, every all her success is based around her running her mouth. There is no skill set that she's really bringing to the table outside of that. Kanye West can design products. We got to give that to him, right? You might not want to buy it. I might not want to buy it, but he does have an audience for the products that he creates. So he can institutionalize that. But if your vertical is, I got to come up here and I have to talk to make money. How do you build a media empire around that? And then in Tucker's situation, because I know what vertical he's probably going to have to go to. How do you attract institutional capital? Because, you know, the guy said, we're trying to get away from the ideologues. How do you attract institutional capital if there's no system there? See, because if you got to always make the video for the video to go big, that's not a system because you can get hit by a car tomorrow. So where's the system at? Right. But if I have a group of people and they all make videos and then I can fade farther and farther and farther into the back until a point where I'm unseen, that's the system. So let me give an example. The people that control Hollywood don't have to make movies. They got a system where other people make movies. The people that control television don't have to do TV. They got a system where other people do TV. But if you're 100% responsible for the money that comes into the business, how do you do that? And it's not something that you've ever had to do. So C. Owens has never had to be 100% responsible for the money that comes into the business. Right? Tucker, whether he was on television or even on, on the Daily Caller, never had to be 100% responsible for the money that was coming in. Now with his situation on X, every interview he does has to be a good interview from him because he's 100% responsible for those interviews. So now they're in a different dynamic because they didn't make their money like that. See, I can put that type of pressure on Beyonce because Beyonce has been doing this for 40 years. She knows how to function if everything's on her. So she knows what she needs to do. I can put that type of pressure on LeBron James because he's been doing this since he was a teenager. He knows how to deal with the pressure of 
every time I step on that court, I got to be on. They don't know how to deal with that kind of pressure. It's not something they're used to. They're used to being part of a larger situation with multiple people, and it's not based around them. See, with LeBron, it's always been based around LeBron. With Beyonce, it's always been, she's always been the star of the show. People that have not always been the star, they often struggle if not, they got to be the star because what does that mean? You always got to be on. You can't be off because you got to be on because why you're the star. So over time, they realize this is not really what I want to do. It's a lot of pressure, right? Because you're 100% responsible for the money that comes into the business because your skill is as an entertainer, it's not anything else you're doing on the side. We talked about the majority of conservative platforms are funded by wealthy benefactors as a labor of love. It's not my opinion. That's not commentary. That's not my take. If you do the research, you can go look it up. See, so I go look up when people have these five, uh, I forgot the particular formation of the charities. I go look up who the donors are, right? And then I go look up, okay, who's the donor now? Who was that person? So I've actually done the research. So a lot of these conservative media platforms that they're forming as like, I think it's 501C, but they're really media platforms. A lot of their benefactors are just wealthy conservatives who just want to involve themselves in this space. That's going to create different expectations than investors who are looking for a percentage return. Right. So if Goldman is investing in your business and I'm talking about a real investment, I'm talking about they're giving you money, like they, the situation with the black women where they just give you some money. No, I mean, Goldman is coming into investing your business. They're looking for a percentage return over a certain amount of time. Most conservative media platforms have never had to function under that particular type of dynamic because they've raised their money from a bunch of real rich old school conservatives. Who not really tripled on the fact that they gave you a few million. Right. So the Daily Caller was funded by a guy named Foster Fries, who seeded it with $3 million. So they got seed money of $3 million to start the Daily Caller, and they expanded from there. Right? So this guy is not looking for every quarter, I need to understand what my investment is doing. He just wants to be involved in this particular space, yada, yada, yada. So that's who they appeal to. Right? So if you look at Parlor. Parlor was created by the daughter of this really, really rich conservative dude, and she gave them the money to do that. And it failed, and then they end up selling it to this other media buyer. But they were never really under pressure to perform like Facebook, right, or Google. They're not under those type of pressures because they don't have institutions in their deal. Institutions are going to put you under a lot of pressure to perform, or they're going to try to figure out how to get you out of position because they want a return on their money. They're not doing this just because they like you. That's why the narrative that institutional money is liberal is hilarious to me, but it works on people that don't know any better. Kanye, we talk about with vultures, with the album, with the gear, and that's the gear that we're looking at. When I say gear, that's slang for clothing. I come out of the streetwear space. He had to start his own companies because he could not find majors to partner with him. He had a difficult time finding a distributor for the music he just put out. He now has to deal with all the headaches of being an owner operator. He has a warehouse. They say he got hit for like a million dollars worth of clothing. Like not too long ago. And they found it somewhere else in L.A. And they said the people didn't have receipts for it. He has to deal with those headaches now because now he's running everything on his own. When he's with somebody else, he just designs and submits and they do all the work. And his job is just to help market it. Now he has the whole headache. Right. So that's what comes with it. But he doesn't, if he wants to sell $20 clothes, now he can. Nobody can tell him you can't do it. They did a Super Bowl ad. Nobody can say, Kanye, you can't do a Super Bowl ad. He wanted to do a Super Bowl ad. They did a Super Bowl ad. He now can do what he wants to do, but he's responsible for everything that happens in the business because he's a top guy. So there's a give and a take with it. I think he'll be successful because he actually has a legit audience that wants to buy things from him as opposed to just watch him. The other two people have an audience of people that want to just watch. Kanye West has developed an audience of people that want to buy. It's a different type of audience. And so that's why I think Kanye will be successful. And we got to see about the other two people, how they're going to play it out. I don't think X is a good platform to be on because to me, X is not going to last long term. Right. They, they really not. Their, their value has, has lessened since, uh, Elon Musk purchased it. 
they're losing a lot of value. So Tucker Carlson and X have a revenue split from an advertising standpoint. However, they don't have the same advertisers that they had before Elon Musk bought the platform. Right. And so he's trying to use that as a platform to kind of launch this new vertical. Let's see how it goes over the next 12 to 24 months. So that's pretty much going to be it. That's all I kind of wanted to talk about. Let me go through the comments. Let me see here. Anybody wanting to come up and talk about anything related to the topic? If you got any disagreements, let me know. I'm going to post that up and then we're going to keep pushing. Okay, so that's pinned in the chat. Anybody want to come up? Got any comments, disagreements? Let me know. Let me go through the super chats. Ray Gun, man, I appreciate the $2 super chat. John Goolery, if I pronounce that correctly. Appreciate the $5 super chat. Girls with Pearls, appreciate the $5 super chat. And Lackenzie Mayweather, appreciate the $1.99 super sticker. That's an Atlanta fan drink, and that's interesting. That's an interesting logo. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so Angelo Joseph, what's up with it? Flow Jersey, what's going on? Miss Hill, how you doing? What's going on from GA? Pascal, what's going on from GA? Everybody hit the like button, please. Miss Cherie says she's surprised Adidas took him back. I didn't know Adidas took him back, so I wasn't tapped into that. I thought he was doing his own thing with his own clothes. I'm not I'm not 100% correct. Miss Dr. K, what's going on with you? Miss KP Bailey, how you feel? Miss Alexander, how you doing? So Pascal says WWE normally trademarks wrestlers' names. Yeah, I believe that because they come up with the name. So I can understand why they would do that. Right? Name, image, and likeness. Candace probably signed a 360 deal with Daily Wire and wanted to get fired. So how would you define a 360 deal? How do you define that? Uh, so what's your definition of it? Because I, in my opinion, people are calling stuff 360 deals and they're just traditional entertainment deals, right? If you come into a space and you haven't made a certain amount of money in a space, you have very little to no leverage. So I don't think the expectation should be that you should get any concessions in any deal. Uh, we have a lot of people in media that have a very big profile but they cannot attach their name to dollars made in entertainment like a Tyler Perry, like a Beyonce. Um, they just can't, you know, it's difficult for to evaluate them on that level. That's why they started talking about people are building brands and that don't matter anything. A brand is not on an accounting statement. The money your concerts made is on an accounting statement, not a brand. That's why they say this type of stuff. Uh, you know, Miss Harvey was building out a brand. As far as we know, that chick is worth three dollars, but she got a brand. So, you know, 360 deal. How do we define that would be a good question. So Kyle, Tyler Perry has already shown what he can do. He has a portfolio. Definitely. Um, he proved himself over the years, but we can attach dollar amounts to all his projects. So we know what he brings to the table because we have dollars behind what he brings to the table. Right. So we know what it is. Mentor Shelly, what's going on, Mentor Shelly? He has tangible media content and control so he can demand more. Definitely. But again, we can attach a dollar amount to what he's done. So if he puts out a movie, we know how much the movie made. Right. And he's over the movie. So he produces it. He directs it. And a lot of sometimes he often does some writing on it. So if he puts it out, we can attach a dollar amount to what the movie brought in. Right. So when you can do that, then you can sit down at a table and be like, I've made X amount of money in, in music. So you may remember this. Or you may be too young. I don't know because I don't know your age. Um, there used to be something back in the day called sound scan. And so a lot of the Bay rappers. Um, once they finally learn how to make sure that they have their um, forgot what you call it, but it's like the UPC codes on the products. 
and they were able to sell those independently. Then when they went to sit down with labels, they were able to bring in sound scan data to show in these markets, I've been able to generate these many purchases, which means that this is how much money I'm making in music. So even though I may not be the highest profile rapper, I actually do make money in music. So guys like Too Short, guys like E-40, these were platinum rappers with very little visibility, but they was able to prove that through this particular program that used to exist back in the day called SoundScan, right? And so one of the things about certain people in media is we can attach a dollar amount to what they've done with other people that are kind of like talking heads. You don't know what they're worth. You know what I'm saying? We can assume, but we really don't know what they're worth because we don't know how much money they're making for anybody. But that's a great comment. Tangible media content and controls, he can demand more. Definitely. So Ant Doc says, I think 50 was the best to do it. He soaked up game and built his empire slowly but surely. Yeah, and, and that could be because of your age. You may think 50 was the best to do it. Um, Because... I think there are people that have done it at a higher level than him and they've had a lot more independence than him. 50 does similar to what we talk about. He does a lot of partnership deals where he doesn't necessarily own everything. Um, and we see a lot of that in music where it's more of a partnership. You know, the deal he signed with uh, Interscope with G unit, these are boutique deals where somebody else controls your financing and they determine whether or not you can put records out. I'm from the South uh, where people just put their own music out because they control everything. So if you look at Luke in uh, Miami, people may not like music, Luke's music. They may like it. You know, however you feel about them is cool. But Luke actually owned the record company. So as a result, he don't need an Anglo or anybody to tell him when his record come out. His record come out when it come out. And he could do whatever he wants to do. So he doesn't have to play a role for them. Um, so 50's made a lot of money with really good partnerships and big up to him. But it's different from, from other environments to where I know that they had 100% control of what they were doing. It wasn't because they had a partnership. There's a story about Luke Skywalker and Progressive Griff I may tell people one day that kind of illustrates how autonomous Luke actually was. And how other people were acting like they had some autonomy, but they really did it. Luke actually had the autonomy to just do whatever the hell he wanted to do down there in Miami. Like he really could do that. And there's a story about him and Professor Griff I may tell people one day. Miss Alexander says, this is why you're working your side hustle in the evenings and weekends. Definitely. GC, what's up with it? So Alonzo, what's going on? What's going on the true mystique? Yeah, so it's 501c3. Yeah, so you can look up the 5013c and see who the donors are. At least I've been able to find it. Yeah, Roscoe says they tried to sell Paula to Kanye. Yeah, they tried to, but they, uh, they sold it to the person that was her media buyer for Blexit. And when you look up, I think it's a nine, it's a nine, nine, nine statement. It's something that starts with a nine statement. Candace had a relationship with a media buyer, this guy. And I did a video on it. It's on the YouTube. A guy out of D.C. The money that they were donating to Blexit, she was she was high. She was paying this guy out over two years. She probably paid this guy at almost two million dollars in media buys. So he was making more money on media buys than anybody that worked for the company as a contractor. He's the same person that bought Parler. And we haven't heard anything from Parler since then. But this is what I'm trying to tell you with a lack of, either there's a lack of expertise there or it was just a, a money grab. You can't build out a platform and think that we're going to do whatever we want to do on the platform because we're conservative. Because at the end of the day, your app is in the marketplace. And if the marketplace is what I mean, marketplace, I mean Apple and Google, if they say we no longer want to carry your app, the people that want to get your app don't have the technological expertise to understand how to download it. So the idea that I'm going to do whatever I want to do, because that's what I want to do in that environment don't really make sense. Right. So the idea that they're going to be able to create this right wing app 
And then you can get on this right wing app and just say whatever you want to say. I mean, it was faulty from the gate. And then you got network effect. You got things of that nature to where she's been involved in a lot of things to where we're going to migrate away from so-and-so and go do this. And none of it works because I don't really think it was supposed to work. I just think they're cash grabs. But big up to her and her husband. So Mary says a Goldman Sachs program for black women does include training. Okay, big up to them. Miss Mary, if you know anybody that has been a recipient of that training uh, and can show what they learned in that training, uh, because something I've talked about before, and you may not know because you're not really tapped into the, the platform like that. Uh, because I know the capacity of the level of business that Goldman does, Goldman can find five black women and make them multimillionaires tomorrow. And they don't have to do it by giving them any money. They can do it by giving them a service contract. Right. The idea that black women need Goldman's money is delusional, but it makes sense to people that don't really understand who Goldman really is and the capacity of business that they do. Goldman can get on the phone right now. And if you have a business, they can give you a million dollar business tomorrow just with a phone call. So I never understood the desire to give black women money. We got black women that already have fully functioning verticals currently right now today. All we have to do is incorporate these women into what we're currently doing. And they got a multi-million dollar business. Right. So I don't I just didn't get it. But I understand how the media works and I understand the audience that they're pointing it at. They want something to rah, rah, sis, boom, ba. I get it. Like I get that piece of it. So it works for Goldman to be able to do that, but not really have to really do it. Because if they really want to do it, they could do it tomorrow. Like it's that easy for them. Because I know how much money they make quarterly. Well, big up to you. Appreciate the comment. So Ray Gunn says, using a sports analogy, Owens is a star player who is a system player. So she has to find another system that highlights her talent. She's a grinder, so she'll figure it out. Yeah, she figured it out because what she's doing, um, you can always race to the bottom. Like, you know, the online space is a space to where, like, you can be the most negative person in the world and still make money. Th th to me, that don't really take a lot of talent. It's just how low will you go? Um, so if you're willing to go low enough, you'll you'll be successful. Right. So, yeah, she'll figure it out because you just figure out how low she's already to me shown that she'll go really low. And so and I just think if she has to go lower, she'll go there. You know, like I say, she a real go getter. So it ain't nothing. I don't think she won't do if it's dollar money, if it's, if it's a dollar sign attached to it. I just think she's that type of person. She just got her own lane. But she's kind of shown me um, she'll go very low to make money and to get to get attention. So it is what it is. Big up to her. You know, everybody got a role to play in this game. So Anthony Russell says black artists recording video budgets increased significantly. Once scale scan, how much units they removed by these folks, they were out selling angle artists. Definitely. You know, cause like I said, most people didn't realize how big short really was. They didn't realize how big 40 really was. Uh, there's another guy out of Houston, Texas. I forgot his name. Um, Y'all know this dude's name zero. Most people don't know how big zero really was. You know, zero was a major artist moving major, major units. But because Zero didn't have a lot of publicity, people didn't know how big Zero really was. You know, so there's a lot of artists that are not mainstream that were able to turn a lot of money and sound scan proved it back when you still had that physical system. That's how people had to respect P because you look on sound scan, you saw how many units P was actually selling. You know, he was really moving units. I had a guy tell me years ago, this was years and years ago. Eminem's second album, I think it was called Encore. This guy worked in radio. He told me Eminem did 800,000 just in the state of Florida. You know what I'm saying? That sound scan really allowed artists to validate one where their market was at, but actually how much money they was actually making. You know what I'm saying? And so he had artists that was doing big, big, big numbers and they were like no names, but they was moving them units though. Yeah, GC says 50 does partnerships with other companies and still doesn't have complete control. Yeah, most, I mean, that's just his business model is to do some level of partnership. You know, and a lot of it comes again from lack of expertise in the area, lack of individuals around you that know how to do it. 
and then you don't want to put up all the capital. So Ann says he got a studio down south who produces his own shows and movies. I say he leverages partnerships with more independence. Okay, I feel you. If you feel that way, I ain't going to argue with you. You know, I just, I don't know. Like I say, maybe because of, uh, I don't know if he was around when a lot of this stuff started off. I may just see it different. Just like where I'm from, um, we saw Gucci different than a lot of people because we know what he was really pushing independent. Where in that era, a lot of people was bigger on, you know, what I would call more mainstream rappers. Where, where I'm from, we really realized what Gucci was really doing on the independent level. So we might have saw him a little bit differently. Because we know that if you're doing an independent and you move in a certain way, you're really doing three, four times with somebody that, like 50 Cent, that signed the Eminem, that you tapped in the Indoscope. It's easy to get a name when you attach to those people. So, you know, I just think it may be well part of the country that we're coming from and kind of our perspective on it. But big up to 50 Cent and what he doing. I don't watch any of his shows, but big up to him. ProPublican, IRS, Gov has everything, definitely. Lel Johnson, appreciate the 499 Super Chat. So Roscoe says the Freedom Phone hustle is probably one of the worst stories I heard at conservative spaces. The dude behind it was getting cheap phones from China. Yeah, but Roscoe, you got to better think, you, you know, you can think your way through the situation. You know, that's, you know, somebody who is 100% dependent upon social media platforms telling you that big tech is against conservatives. I mean, this don't make no sense. But you got to have sense for that not to make sense. A lot of people just look at, like I say, a lot of people, man, they just really want to be a cheerleader, right? Whether they male or female. So they don't really think their way through this stuff. You know, somebody whose whole life was based on social media and using social media technology to finance and support their lifestyle, then telling us that big tech is bad. Like if it's so bad, then like, how come it worked for you then? But they're able, like I say, some of these people, man, there's no, is nothing they won't do if it's a dollar attached to it. Like there's just, that's just how they think, bro. So it is what it is. It's always been people like that. It, you know, growing up, man, I know people would, would sell drugs to members of their own family because they made money. Like it's just people just do all kind of crazy stuff. If there's a dollar attached to it, everybody different. But big up to her and her husband, just like Miss Katrina say, big up to her and her husband. Right. Because they, they obviously need money more than what people think they do. Right. They, to me, they hurting for it. So Roscoe say once he got. Uh, the phones from China, he was changing up some of the apps on the phone, marketing the price, I remember right. Probably was, but if it's working, it's working. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with the other phones, but it's a conservative phone, it's a freedom phone, I guess. I heard it was like just an unlocked stock phone. But see, here's the business model, who's great. If I can buy unlocked stock phones from China and rebrand them as a freedom phone, and people think they got a better phone because they got the freedom phone, I would tell you to keep selling it to them. Right. It's just a white label deal. Keep selling it. You know, they bought into the market. So from Golden Sachs website, Golden Sachs research has shown one of the fastest ways to accelerate change and effectively begin to address the racial wave gap is to listen and invest in black women. I feel you. But again, Miss Katrina, if they wanted to really do that. In my opinion, they could take 10 black women who have businesses and incorporate those black women into what they have going on. And they got multi-million dollar businesses right now today. And they don't have to, they don't have to work hard to find those black women. They already exist. And to me, that's the easy fix as opposed to we're going to give you money and give you training. We already got the people qualified to do that. Right. Now we can do that on the back end, but we currently right now have people that have already shown that they have that capacity of business. They just need one of the things about business, and you know this, and I know this is you need the access to bigger clients and bigger contracts so you can do more business. You already know how to do what you do. I already know what I do what I do. But if I can get access to bigger clients and bigger contracts, I can do more business. That's some of the things I dealt with when I was a media buyer. I didn't have the network to get people to give me a million dollars a year to buy ads. That just wasn't my network. Well, I knew guys to wear if you weren't willing to spend $100,000 a month on ads, 
they wouldn't even do a, a, a call with you to talk about your business. So it's just, it's that network, it's that access. So I know Goldman can do that. They have the ability because I know who they are and I know what kind of money they bring in. Yeah, zero. That's who it is, a zero. Exactly. Tech, not another one. Did big, big numbers. Most people didn't know who he was. Right? And him and his business partner, wealthy. And most people had no idea who Tech Nine was. All right? But he was doing numbers and was touring damn near the whole year. But yeah, Tech Nine did numbers, bro. You know, and in that section of the, of the country, he's a monster. You know what I'm saying? He's a monster in that section of the country. I never liked his music, but it ain't about me. He got an audience. And he did all this before social media. Imagine Tech Nine being young with this type of social media and the kind of hustle he had back then, he'd kill it. He would really destroy a lot of people. So L. Light says it's also a case of us being new players in old games, meaning that we don't have the historical networks that other groups have. Definitely, I agree with you. You know, and we've been locked out of a lot of stuff. So we don't we don't have those networks. We also don't have that expertise. Katrina says she picked him because he was intelligent. I mean, and it's weird that people and I'm not talking about you, but it's interesting that people said that she picked him because he was so smart. What she said was he matched her intelligence. That doesn't mean she's smart. It just means he matched her intelligence. You know, so it's interesting that when people listen to that, they was thinking like, oh, that meant she felt like he was smarter than black people. No, I didn't take it that way. I took it that he matched her intelligence. I never saw her as the smartest person in the world. You know, I just don't. I think she just knows how to tell people what they want to hear. I don't think that's intelligent. I just think, you know, it's how low will you go? So it's, it's interesting that people took it as she was saying black people are not intelligent. I didn't get that from when she said it. I got it from her saying he matched her intelligence, which to me is, you know, is about average. But big up the hell, you know, I'm happy that anybody finds somebody that worked for what they're trying to do. I ain't going to go against it. Access to bigger clients. That's what I'm doing now. Most definitely. We need bigger clients. We need bigger contracts. We need bigger accounts because... What that allows us to do is incorporate more people into the deal, right? And that's what Goldman can do for people. They can bring people into their system and give them bigger and bigger and bigger deals. And then now they can go. So if we really want to help black women, this is what Goldman will, will do. We got a black woman that got a business. She does X, Y, Z. We give her a multi-million dollar deal and then now she can incorporate more black women into her business because now she can essentially contract out services and her business to those other black women, right? So that's how business really works is a cascade down. We don't have to do this individual thing. We just can essentially build off what you call like a consortium, bring this one person in, and then they get such a big contract, they contract that out to other black women. So, I, and I know they know how to do that because that's what they do, right? They're Goldman Sachs. I know they know how to do that because that's what they do. That's part of their culture. So this idea that, you know, they're going to just give people some money and some training. I mean, it sounds good on, on, on television. It looks good on the Internet. But I know they know better than that because that's not that's not that's not how they build their businesses out. And that's also not how they build out their investment relationships, you know, but it is what it is. So anybody that got the money, I'm happy for them. I'm not against it. Get the money. So um, Mr. Lindsay says. McDonald's did that with black people to create the black McDonald's owners association. They plucked people who were in their ecosystem to make them owners. Definitely. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, I talked about the black guy in my city who owned two McDonald's and then got the, one of the biggest McDonald's in the city at that time. He was black, made him a millionaire. McDonald's didn't need to find another black person. They already had black people in their network. Just give the guy a bigger restaurant. He already shown you he know how to run two restaurants real good. So they know how to do this stuff. They can make people successful overnight. They just got to give them the access and tap them into the network. 
You know, I read a book about, uh, what's the guy's name? The brother up there in New York, Reginald Lewis, and him trying to do the leverage buyout game. His biggest issue was that people would not sell him the business. Not that he couldn't get the financing, not that he didn't know how to structure the deals. They just wouldn't sell it to him. And then he had to get with this other guy, I think it was a junk bond guy. And the junk bond guy told them people, y'all need to deal with Reginald Lewis. He's a good guy. And him doing that gave him the access and the network he needed to get in the door. See what I'm saying? So that's what a lot of people same thing with Byron. Byron had been trying to get people to run ads on his network for years. And they wouldn't do business with him. And then he said that he was at a like an event and one of the white guys told the other white guys there, how come y'all not doing business with Byron? Once he said that, everybody started doing business with Byron. They didn't need to give Byron no money. They was locking Byron out. Once the man said, bring Byron in, Byron a billionaire now. This stuff is real simple and they know it's real simple. They try to play with us because they think we don't know no better. This stuff is real simple, right? So they play these little games of we're going to shoot y'all some bread and we're going to have a training program and we're going to do another symposium in a conference. They can make you a millionaire overnight. They know how to do it. And we have the people that actually have the expertise. There's too many black women in this country that actually are running legit businesses, right? They just need to get brought into bigger deals. It's not as if they don't know how to run a business already. Let's be serious. Five fifty-seven. We got 104. Let me read a few more comments before we get up on out of here. GC says Goldman has billions of dollars per annual. Exactly. I know that. GC, you know that too, because we know the finance space. You know, they, they can do this anytime they want to. But big, like I say, the women that got the money, big up to them. But Goldman playing games, right? I know it. Yeah, it was Michael Milken. Yeah, Michael Milken had to tell people, deal with Reggie. Then once they did that, then everything was cool. Right. But they didn't want to do no people didn't want to do business with Reggie. And it wasn't as if he didn't know what he knew. He knew what he knew. You know, that's how the game go. So appreciate everybody for coming through. Hope you got some value from the video. Stay safe and talk to you later.